Hi, Dorita here, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about figuring out how to, um, to make sense of fraction and decimal um, equivalents. Um, a lot of kids, um, they start off not having uh, a real good knowledge of this. Um, and if you try to just get them to memorize them, then it takes forever. But when you start using number relationships to tell the difference between the, them and put them into groups of families, then it makes it really, really simple to get the decimal equivalents to match the fractions. And so I'm going to uh, show you what we're going to do. We're going to start off with... Um, with three big, I call them the big three, because if you know these three fractions and their decimal equivalents, then you can figure out any of the others. And those are your halves, your thirds, and your fifths. Okay? So, you know that the whole is like, if you have a whole thing, then you have 100%. You have 100 hundredths of that whole. Well, half is going to be that piece divided into two, so you have two equal parts. Well, what is half of a hundred? Half of a hundred is fifty hundredths. So one half is going to be fifty hundredths. Now, if you divide it into three parts, a hundred divided by three, you can't really do that exactly, but ninety-nine divided by three is thirty-three hundredths, but then you also have a third. So thirty-three and a third hundredths. And I put that line over there because that just shows that it's going to keep repeating that three. So that's 33 and a third. Now a fifth is um, how many fives are in a hundred? Twenty. So five times twenty is a hundred. So that means one fifth would be twenty hundredths. So if you know these three, then you can figure out any of the rest of them. So what I want you to understand is that if I've got a a piece, and this whole piece is 100 hundredths. If I divide it into two, I've doubled my pieces, but I've halved the size. So that means that each piece of this is 50 hundredths and 50 hundredths. Okay? But if I divide it into two again, once again, I've doubled the number of pieces, but I've halved their size. So that means now I've got four pieces. So that means that fourths are actually half of my halves. And so what's half of 50? Well, half of 50 is 25 hundredths. So that means that all of my fourths, their decimal equivalent, is 25 hundredths. And so because 25, 25, 25, and 25 equals the whole 100% or 100 hundredths in decimals. Now, what if I did that one more time? If I took each fourth and divided it into two equal pieces, then I would have eight pieces. So all of these are families. They're related to each other. Halves are related to fourths, and fourths are related to eighths. Well, an eighth is half of your 25 hundredths. Well, half of 25 is 12 and a half. So that's the decimal equivalent for your eighth. Okay, so using your relationships, you're just halving them every single time that we're doubling the denominator. So we half the decimal when we double the denominator. So now that we know that, when we go to our thirds, I'm going to double the denominator and I'm going to half my decimal. So half of 33 and a third is actually 16 and two thirds. But to do this as a decimal, two-thirds would just round to seven. Okay? And then with my fifths, if one-fifth is twentieth, if I double my denominator, then I'm going to need to half my decimal. So one-tenth is equal to ten-hundredths. So that was really simple. And we can also figure out where one-seventh and one-ninth would fall in. Now remember, these are not going to be exact, but a seventh is going to fall in between my six and my eights. If my six is sixteen and two thirds and my eights are twelve and a half, what's right in the middle of that? Well, what's right in the middle of twelve and sixteen is fourteen hundredths. Okay? And then with ninths, they're going to fall in between the eights and the tenths. And so I've got twelve and a half 
percent or 125 thousandths and then 10. What falls in between 10 and 12? Well, 11 does. And so using our number relationships, we can very easily figure out these decimal equivalents for our basic fractions and then we can use those to help us figure out other fraction and decimal equivalents as we go. So I hope you enjoyed this. This is a, a, a real simple way to actually use your relationships and patterns to help kids remember because they don't have to memorize everything. If they can figure out these three, if they know these three, they can figure out the rest of them by using their relationships from the numbers. So um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, check out my blog at www.doritamacolors.org and uh, I've got lots more really cool stuff to look at. So I'll uh, be putting these, um, the new videos up very um, uh, quickly and so there's going to be a whole lot to look at and I would love to share it with you. Um, my mission is to help kids make math make sense. And so um, let me know if there's anything that, uh, that you would like to see or um, a lesson that you would like to see put up on um, the video, and I would love to do it for you. So um, thanks a lot, and I'll see you on the next video.